Welcome to Tony Hill Studio. My name is Kendall Kessler. I'm going to do another demonstration painting. It occurred to me that even though I'm married to a naturalist who studies birds and butterflies, and I've done a number of paintings of birds, hawks, owls, I haven't done one of a swan. So I thought I'd do a real coloristic interpretation of a swan this time. And even though it's white, I'm going to really get into some, just some real fun handling of the color, the uh, warm and cool relationships, and just See what happens. I never really know in this type of painting. This is the uh, type of painting where I call my um, Kendall Expressions, where I really just express something that is based on something, but then is uh, my own creative take on that. I have a lot of different categories in my portfolio. And please click on the link to my website. And one of them is Kendall Expressions. And that's when this one's going to be. A lot of wildlife in that series, a lot of different things, but uh, more wildlife than anything else. And I really just like to have fun with the color. Uh, it's not one of my center of my mind where I do not uh, have any recognizable subject matter. These are ones where I just work from something and see what happens. I'm not going to work on the head just right now because I want to just get this going and see what direction it would take to. Well, I said I'm not going to work on the head, now I am. <laughs> well, I'm going to go up there a little bit. I don't know. I had an idea, and as always, it's like, well, I don't know. Who knows what's going to happen. I know um, it's really hard to know what direction to take a, this type of fanciful painting in until you've seen a lot of it because you need to see all the colors together, working together. And since I am doing a white swan in a coloristic way, really need to see what's going to happen. I might just end up going back to some real more of a white look. I don't know. But as I mentioned in another video, these colors that I'm kind of just really playing with, this warm, cool relationship is everywhere you look. It's just not as easy to see in certain things because of the conflict between them canceling each other out. But the great thing about something white is you can really see it. I know if I were looking at an actual swan, even in the middle of the day, I know I'd still be seeing some real interesting warm and cool color relationships because you don't have that conflict of them kind of canceling out to gray. You're seeing the white and you're seeing the spectrum of light just right on that object so it separates out very beautifully, especially in the latter part of the day. Uh, middle, mid part of the day is really hard to see this. Colors tend to be kind of garish. But you know what we see in the evening, a beautiful sunset and all, is really all around us. I remember saying that one time to a class and they're like, what are you talking about? Well, you got to really look and really slow down your eye and really analyze what is in front of you. Okay, now I'm starting to get something that kind of light. I don't know, that might keep it kind of light and not really get into such a real fancy, fancy um, warm and cool colors playing off each other. I don't know. Get it all covered and then I decide. But um, if you really just stop and look, after a while you'll start to notice that colors that you thought were gray were really mixtures of warm and cool colors and they're, they just look kind of gray because if you take equal amounts of complementary colors they will cancel out to gray. So that's why you don't see this as well in most things that you're looking at but um, it's something that artists are fascinated with. <laughs> we really are. We just love this sort of thing and like to use it in our artwork when we see it and also I personally like to play with it just really exaggerate the heck out of it so that it is something that is not something you're really going to see that's really fanciful and is an expression, a creation. Of course all art, doesn't matter how real it looks or how fanciful it is, a creation by an artist and it's uh, just what we love to do. Can't imagine not painting, I really really do live to paint and work hard to promote it because I don't want it to be thrown away and I certainly can't take it with me. But it's a very hard, very competitive field, and it's not easy to sell artwork. 
But uh, I work out all the time, and I am in 32 states and six countries now. I keep at it, get it all over the world if I can. Okay. Um, it's kind of not taking the turn I thought it was would. That's uh, that's art for you. You never know. But um, as always, I'm not going to do the whole painting. I'm going to cover it and then decide later. Yeah, I feel like I need to stay up in the real light ranges, but then I haven't done the water yet. And that's always, um, you always have to, we always have to look at color relationships played off one of each one of them. And so when I get into that water, I may change my mind about how I'm going to do this. But it's starting to get some really, just some nice, really delicate color relationships, which is, you know, nice. I am not trying to just, not just doing a white owl, not my white owl, good grief, I'm in the other, other one, <laughs> not doing a white swan. I am doing a interpretation that has the swan shape. I'm starting to see some interesting things going on. Okay, I'm going to real quick put in the uh, dark area where the swan has the beak area. And that, that's going to make a big difference because that's so far it's going to be the only place I have any really dark values. That's what we call the light dark areas values. And it's going to make a big difference, although I'm still keeping it kind of light. I have always preferred the high values to the low, but then uh, really like a tremendous amount of contrast. Big fan of the Baroque with that wonderful lighting. Nothing like it. Rembrandt. It was, it was amazing. Just beautiful, beautiful light effects. And Okay, well now I'm starting to see something I kind of like. Um, I'm going to get in some, some green through here and just kind of start working with a little some more smaller brush strokes to really get into some more complex color systems. And I'm starting to like that. So I'm going to real quick put in, use a larger brush and work in the water and do some swirling effects with that and see what happens. And I want to stick to um, pretty much what you'd see where you'd see a swan, and then decide later, I don't want to do that. Might change it all together, but uh, that's going to make a big difference on how I see this painting, and I might want to start, in fact I do want to start, using some some blues in the water to work with the blues in the swan. And I'm not going to do a whole lot with the reflection, but I'm going to do a little bit. So I'm gonna put some pink in there. This is not exactly. This is not all. When I started, when I started this, what I thought I was gonna do, but it's um, so what's happening. As I am reacting to it, um, that's kind of hard to explain to people that don't paint. But so much of painting is is a reaction to what's going on as you paint, especially if you're not trying to reproduce what's in front of you, which I'm not. So I am really just looking at it as abstraction from life that I am having a good time playing with. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to really start changing some of the colors here, or I think the colors in the water are going to overpower the colors in the swan. Yeah, I'm not sure how I'm going to take this. It's probably going to look a lot different when I'm done. We'll see. But that's why I don't like to finish them in the YouTube, for one thing, it takes so long because um, I am going to spend some time really thinking about it and maybe changing it a lot, maybe changing it a little. Never know. So I don't want to be working forever on film. I know I said this ad nauseum, but I really don't want these to be too long. Uh, there's no, nothing wrong with that, but I, I just don't want to. I like to move it along. And 
not have everybody watching for a long time. Okay, now that's going to make a big difference. Probably shouldn't have done that. But we'll see. Because there's nothing in the swan with that much contrast. So I might have to really change that. I might add some rushes and things too when this is done. I'm going, it's going, going kind of rather quickly. It's not, I feel like I'm going to get to a first stage of this pretty fast. Um, the last one I did with the owl, it's like, boy, it's really taking a long time. And there was so much to do. So this one, it's moving a, little, a lot faster. And I like that better. But still, lots and lots to do. Oh, great, just knocked right into the swan's head. Okay, I have to go back into that. I don't want it to look too undone before I start working on it by myself. So I'll get the smaller brush again. And start to pull that a little more. I don't know, this is really probably one of the most unusual Kindle expression paintings that I've done. I'm not real sure how. I want to do this one, and it may change quite dramatically. I don't know. But I do want to establish it a little bit better before I stop the YouTube, because it's starting to get a little mixed up. So I do want to get that really straightened out. And then I will go ahead and work on my own. I wasn't really going to do one today, but then I said I've really got the time, and I am trying to do one a week. I want to really have these demos out there, and hopefully get more and more notice for them. I'm just a, I'm going to do a whole lot more. And then I'm going to make a bunch of decisions off camera. But uh, I have some ideas on how this is going to work. But like I said, this one is very different. Not at all what I started out thinking I was going to do. So who knows? Take an even smaller brush and just kind of make it a little more just establish a little bit more and then I'm going to go ahead and quit. My husband spends so much time studying all birds and butterflies and wildlife and wildlife period, but he's always been most fascinated with birds and butterflies. And he said the main reason is you can see them. So, so much of wildlife you don't see that much of. But birds and butterflies, you really get out there and see them. And so that's the main reason he really concentrates on them. He is quite the naturalist. As I said before, if you put his name in Google, you'd be amazed what you come up with. And he doesn't even have a website. But, um, he has done this all his life. It's very important to him to try to get people to really appreciate his home life in the mountains. Um, let's see, we're Ridge and Valley, not Blue Ridge. Everybody likes to think we're in the Blue Ridge. But um, that's just a term that most people like to say about this pretty area, pretty, pretty mountain area. But what we are in is in the Ridge and Valley. But we are close to the Blue Ridge, and I've done many paintings of the Blue Ridge. And then paintings of mountains near Blue Ridge, and they, you know, they look just like them. But uh, I think that's why everybody just keeps calling it the Blue Ridge, because the uh, all the ridges around here look so much like the beautiful Blue Ridge, which is only a small strip in North Carolina and Virginia. Okay, I think I'm going to quit. I have a feeling this one's going to go a lot farther than this. I don't know. 
but uh, I'm just gonna put a tiny bit more paint in and quit and then work on it without talking, without the camera going. Just wanna get rid of the white. I notice some artists really like to have white around their image, but God, I never do. I always feel like, well, you know, what's that white stuff? Just uh, doesn't work for me. There's nothing wrong with doing that, but it doesn't work for me at all. I gotta completely get rid of the white and have whatever it is standing on against another color. The way the way the world is, which I know is kind of a weird thing to say for somebody who does really fancy things. But then I also do represent what we call representational things too. And in all of mine, I like to get rid of the white. Okay, I think I'm going to stop it right there. Uh, thank you for watching. Be sure to click on the link that will have the final painting, and then there are other links to my website, to my work on Etsy, and to other sites.